Hello, let's talk about successive division today. Successive division is part of numbers, but it is a typical application of the division algorithm. When a number is divided by another number and then whatever is the quotient is again divided. So let's look at the division algorithm first. Dividend is equal to divisor into quotient plus the remainder. So how does successive division happen? Let's look at this. The dividend is divided by the first divisor. We get a remainder and we get a quotient. Now the quotient becomes the next dividend and we have a new divider coming in. So new divisor divides the new quotient and gives us another quotient. Now this another quotient goes further and get divided by a third divisor. So this is how successive division happens. Let's look at how it is put into a formula. Let's work backwards. The last division first. The last division is divisor 3 into the quotient 3 plus the remainder 3. Now this becomes the innermost portion. This becomes the next quotient. So next quotient multiplied by divisor 2 plus the remainder 2. Now this becomes the first quotient. Then it is multiplied by the first divisor and the first remainder is added. So this is how we get the original number. Let's look at a question how exactly it is done. 5432 is divided by 9. 5432 when divided by 9 will give me a quotient of 603 and the remainder will be 5. Let's divide 603 by 7. So 603 when divided by 7 will give me a remainder 1 and a quotient 86. Let's divide this 86 by 5. So how do we get it? 86 divided by 5, 17 becomes the quotient and 1 becomes the remainder. Now the entire process is completed. Let's put it into a formula that we discussed. Innermost is 17 into 5 plus 1. So that becomes 86. This is multiplied by 7 plus 1. And this is multiplied by 9 plus 5. So this gives me the original number. Let's look at a question from here. A number is successively divided by 8 and 11 to give a remainder 3 and 7 respectively. What will be the remainder when we divide this number by 88 that is a product of 8 and 11? As we discussed, let's back, work backwards. Let's start with 11. So we don't know what the quotient is. Let's assume that the quotient is D. So 11 into D plus the remainder 7 that becomes the inner number. If you multiply this by 8, so 8 bracket start 11 D plus 7 plus 3 will give me the original number. If we solve it, what do we get? We get 88x plus 56 plus 3. So that is 88x plus 59. Now if we divide this number by 88, we should get our answer. So if we divide this by 88, we, fi we find that the first part which is 88x gets divided completely. The second part which is 59 does not get divided. So that is where the remainder is. 59 is the remainder. Let's look at another problem here. A number is successively divided by 8, 7, 6 to give a remainder of 6, 5, 4. As we did last time, let's put it in an equation. 6d plus 4 brackets, then we have 7 into this bracket plus 5, then we have 8 into the entire bracket plus 6. So this gives us the entire number. What will be the remainder if this is divided by 21? So let's divide it. The number becomes 336d plus 270. And if we divide it by 21, we see that 336 is completely divided. It is only 270 that we should be worried about, which gives us a remainder of 18. So we get the answer is 18. How do we solve it faster? Let's take another thing. In the same question, let's form a pattern. We, we write all the divisors, 8, 7, 6 on the top row. And we write all the remainders in the bottom row, which is 6, 5, 4. Now let's have a look. There are some blue arrows and there are some red arrows. Now the blue arrows suggest we have to multiply, whereas the red arrows suggest we have to add. So when we multiply the last remainder, which is 4, by the previous divisor, so 4 into 7, and then we add 5 to that number. So 4, 7 is a 28, plus 5 gives us 33. Now 33 is then multiplied by the previous divisor. So 33 into 8 plus 6. Now 33 into 8 plus 6 will give us 270. So this is how we get the remainder. If you look closely, we are only bothered about remainder in the both the questions that we have tackled. So it is not the quotient or the divisor that we are more bothered about. We are more bothered about the remainder, which is easily found out by this small method and an easy to calculate. So let's use this in finding more remainders in successive division.